The Eagles have won the toss. Mark Say will be back deep with Derek Witherspoon. Scott Blanton to kick it off. Go. For North Turner's Redskins. The Eagles get the ball first. Witherspoon has been dangerous in years past and this year. Good returner. This is a different type of kickoff coverage. They, they're all in a bunch and they all broke and then they're going to kick it. And a running start. But it's going to be Witherspoon at the seven. To about the 30. Good return. Let's look at the Eagles offense. Led by a remarkable quarterback. Ty Detmer. Gus Ferrat on the other side of the field, his adversary. Detmer looks like you could break him in half with one hit, but he's a tough guy and he's four and one as a starter. In front of him, Brooks, Panos, McKenzie, Holmes, and Cooper. In the backfield, Waters and Turner. Irving Fryer, Christy Jones wide, and rookie Jason Dunn, the tight end. Waters comes in motion on the first play. Ty Detmer's back to throw. And completes his first pass to Chris T. Jones. And let's look at that Washington defense. Sterling Palmer, Rich Owens, the two ends, Sean Gilbert, and Mark Boutte for as long as he can go. The two tackles. Marcus Patton, Rod Stevens, and Ken Harvey. A group that frankly hasn't been playing well. And the secondary, Darrell Green, Tom Carter. The cornerbacks, Charlie Garner. Not the deep back, but split wide. That's Garner. Taken down by Darrell Morrison. But Charlie Garner, as the Eagles show up some wrinkles early. You know, we were talking to John Gruden yesterday, the offensive coordinator. That was one of the things that he wanted to do is to is to get the ball in Charlie Garner's hand because Charlie Garner is always a threat to make a big play. Here's John Gruden right here, and, and he's saying that he wants to get the ball his not only as a runner but as a receiver, as he just did then. Second about four. Ricky gets the carry and hammers close to a first down. One thing we'll be watching for on when Washington is on defense is Daryl Green, number 28, will shadow, will stay with, will cover Irving Fryer. You know the interesting thing about Ir Irving Fryer, in the last five games, he has more catches than any NFL receiver. So if you talk about who's hot in this league right now, it's Irving Fryer. Daryl Green was saying when they told him that he was going to match up the whole game with Irving Fryer. He said he really got hyped. He said it hasn't been like this in a long time here. We just got a glimpse of the matchup. Detmer, the quarterback sneak, trying for the first down, probably got it. You know, in this, the, the Eagles used that West Coast offense, and, you know, John Gruden uh, uh, brought that in along with Ray Rhodes. And, you always have to have a go-to guy. The go-to guy is always the flanker. Because the flanker is a wide receiver is off the line of scrimmage and he can be moved. And the go-to guy here on this team is number 80, Irving Fryer. Why do they hate to be called the West Coast on offense so much? I don't know. I think it's just, you know, because they like it to be their own offense and they don't like anything to have a, a term on it. Like they were talking about in the pregame show, Howie Long was saying that. The West Coast offense really doesn't, you know, get along with a running back. There's <laughs> right. never, and that's and that's true. And John Gruden has had his problems with Ricky Waters. I mean, we talked about the problem they had last week, but he's had three or four run-ins with Ricky Waters. Detmer pitches back to Waters. Waters, who not only is quick, elusive, and a good receiver, he's gotten bigger and he's stronger and more durable now. You know, one thing about Ty Detmer is he has completed the ball in the last three games to eight different receivers. And that's one of the, the problems when you have a guy like Ricky Waters who wants the ball every play. And you got a guy like Ty Detmer who's throwing the ball to a lot of different guys. And you got Irving Fryer, who's the hottest wide receiver in the league. And there's only one football. They go two tight ends this time with Waters deep. And 
Detmer back to throw it. Lobs it out of bounds in the direction of Waters, but he was just throwing that away. He is very adept at that. Yeah, that's the thing. He's he's very adept at everything in the pocket. You know, we were talking to the the, the coaches and just watching him on film, and he really moves around well in the pocket. He has a good feel for everything. You see how how you know he's only six feet tall, so he has to be able to move to find lanes to get away from things and still be able to throw the ball. Third and eight. He hasn't gotten the ball to Fryer yet. Four wide receiver. Trips to his left. Detmer from behind. Rich Owens came around the corner. Detmer didn't see him coming as he stepped up. And that's what the Redskins need. If they're going to, if they're going to do anything, they're going to have to get a pass rush. And you're going to see Rich Owens. He's just coming right around, right around that left side. He just went right around Richard Cooper and made that play. So Tommy Hutton will punt for the Eagles. Brian Mitchell back deep for the Redskins. Hutton's left footed. Kick sails into the end zone and out, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Fans are booing that one. Here in Philadelphia, they'll boo anything, but they know their football. They didn't they didn't want that ball kicked by Tom Hutton into the end zone. Well, he wasn't trying to do it, obviously. Yeah, but if he did it, they he did it, they boo. They're gonna boo him, and there's a penalty on the play anyway. So they'll Darryl get another Green. chance to boo him. Darrell Green up to talk with the referee. Walt Coleman. I think they should turn this penalty down if they haven't done it already because the ball did go in the end zone and they'll get it on the 20. Holding offense well, number not, 88. They're not going to turn it down. Repeat fourth down. Yeah, because now this really doesn't hurt the punter. The punter can go ahead and let go now. I know and he can just punt it and the only thing that it does it, it does give the Redskins an opportunity to return, but if they took the penalty, then now they have to get a return. If they didn't take the penalty, they would have gotten the ball in the 20 anyway. So we'll see what happens here. And Brian Mitchell, of course, is one of the best. Mitchell singles fair catch and makes it, so they lost eight yards. Yeah, so they shouldn't have taken the penalty. Right. Right again. You ever think about coaching again? No way. Nothing, nothing. First quarter. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By the new Dodge, it's about change. By the U.S. Army, be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. And by Taco Bell, there's nothing ordinary about it. Taco Bell. Back at Veterans Stadium in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. The Redskins take over at their own 18 and a half, uh, beg your pardon, 14 and a half yard line. That's Logan in motion, and this is Terry Allen hit behind the line of scrimmage by Rhett Hall. Let's look at the Redskin offense. Gus Ferrat is the quarterback. Won the job, of course, over Heath Schuler, Patton, Trey Johnson, Ulanek, Dahl, and Fordanish. Terry Allen and Mark Logan in the backfield. Westbrook and Henry Ellard wide, and Jamie Asher. The tight end now they go with two tight ends. All right back to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Jamie Asher. Let's look at the Eagle defensive unit. Fuller, Dixon, Red Hall, and Mike Mamula. The front four. William Thomas, Willis, and Farmer. The three rapidly improving and rapid linebackers Bobby Taylor Brian Dawkins Michael Zordich and Troy Vincent the secondary Zordich calls the defensive signal third and 13 Brock pump fake goes deep incomplete intended for West.
Westbrook. Did it the old stop and go. Bobby Taylor, good coverage. Yeah, that was real good coverage by Bobby Taylor because Westbrook was one, was trying to go deep, and he did it with the double move. It was the out and up. A lot of times if the guy bites on that out, then he can get by him on the up. Bobby Taylor played the out, then ran with the up. So the Redskin offensive unit is three and out. Good job by the Eagle defense, Matt Turk. He has a very, very strong leg. Back to kick, back out of his own end zone. Mark Say deep for the Eagles. And Turk puts it up high and long. The coverage is right there. Good kick and great coverage by the Redskins. Scott Turner, who was all over Mark Say. It's nothing, nothing. Now, watch this. Here's, here's Scott Turner. He's being double teamed here. Now, the way to beat a double team is just go outside, you see? And then to get outside, just run out of bounds. So Scott Turner's here. Now, he has to get away from Bobby Taylor, so he just runs out of bounds, runs up outside bounds for about 10 yards, comes back in, and look at the timing on this. He gets there right after the ball gets there. Perfect. That's the way to beat a double team because a double team is going to inside out you and you beat the outside guy by running out of bounds for about 10 yards. First and 10 at their own 33, three wide receivers, but that's Ricky Moore. To the 40, stopped by Ken Harvey. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat, after beating the Packers last week, is there a letdown in Kansas City? Opening drive by the Bears, capped by this 14-yard run by Raymond Harris. Bears on top by a touch. Back to Philadelphia, Pat Summerall and John Madden. That would be a surprise if that holds up. That Bear at Kansas City scores second and three here. It's Waters again. He's got the first down to midfield. Darryl Morris had made the stop. It looks like Ricky Waters is ready to play today, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, we know what happened last week. Here's Ricky Waters here, I formation. And this, this, this is a formation that he runs from the best. He just got that lead. He starts the lead, but he doesn't follow his lead because he found a cutback lane inside of his lead. Waters, four carries, 20 yards. <laughs> Now that's his fifth carry stopped by Marcus Patton. You know, one thing about Ray Rhodes when we talked to him yesterday, a couple of things about him is one, Ricky Waters pound isn't going to influence him. The other thing is he has these superstitions. Now, you look at this. He has two pennies in each shoe. One penny is a head and one penny is a tail, a head and a tail in both shoes. And he wears those right now in the game, but he says that's that's one of the things that brings him good luck. And as a coach, you never know how or why you win. And it may be those pennies. To heck with comfort. <laughs> he's, he's not worried about it. And he has he has the equipment guy tape them in there. They and look he make boring. sure that they did. Yeah, they have to he has to tape them in there and they have to be in there when he comes to put those shoes on. They look more like quarters than they did pennies. <laughs> yes. Of course, they're taped up. Uh, yeah, but then he has other things. I mean, he has a, a prayer in one pocket. He has this little crystal ball thing that he carries in one pocket. He has all kinds of stuff on his person. Three wide receivers. Mark Boutte jumped a little too quickly. Remember last week we had two abated. We had two guys where they went in the neutral zone and went abated. Unabated. Unabated, I mean. yeah. Wonder if that's an unabated. Encroachment. Defense number uh, 93. An encroachment. Five yard penalty. You have to be baited to yeah. encroach. Here's Bute here now. Now, now, now he encroaches because encroachment is just going into the neutral zone, which is the length of the football. But I think that's unabated. Once you get beyond the line and you go towards the quarterback, I think that's encroachment and unabated to the quarterback if they didn't call it. There are two words I would have never used if I hadn't been involved in football. Ricky Water picking his way, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Rich Owens. 
in the faceoff with Waters. Yeah, one thing that uh, that the Eagles want to do is is, is is they want balance, and uh, you know they don't want to run the ball all the time, and they don't want to pass it all the time. And I think that's the thing that Ty Detmer has brought to this team is they're not just one dimensional. That if you want to gang up on the run against Ricky Waters, he can cut you up with a passing game. Denver back to throw it. As Tech got a man wide open, just overthrew Jason Dunn. Jason Dunn was 10 steps behind everybody. You know, the funny thing about that, there were four Redskins back there, and they just dropped the coverage. Kevin Turner was back there. Here's Jason Dunn. Here's the, here's the tight end. Here's, here's Kevin Turner. He's going to be out there, too. Jason Dunn is going to be out there. There's going to be four Redskin defenders down there. You see, watch Kevin Turner, 34. He's going to be going up. They kind of all go out there with him. They all look at him, and Jason Dunn just right runs right by the whole bunch of them. Third and 11. Denver back to the Incomplete. Too far away for field goal attempt, so the Eagles will have to punt again. And Ty Detmer has to be kicking himself wow, on that yeah. one because you don't get in the National Football League, you don't get a lot of free shots like that. You don't get it in any any football league where you get a guy wide open, and that's the only thing you can do. The only thing you can do after you get a guy wide open and miss him is just hit yourself in the head. Just go boom, boom. Quarterbacks will always do that. They do something wrong, they always hit themselves in the head. It didn't even have to be that good a pass. Mitchell was the deep back, and the ball from Hutton, the punt from Hutton, sails into the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. No penalty this time. The Eagle fans punt. are booing, though. <laughs> yep. They know their kicking game here. Nothing, nothing. We're back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Nothing, nothing score. Redskins have the ball at their own 20. The Eagles had it pop. They really had a good chance. Detmer missed. You know, we talked about matchups. Bobby Taylor is going to be on Michael Westbrook all day. Troy Vincent is going to be on Henry Ellard all day. Rock gives to Terry Allen, who slipped. In the backfield and never quite made it back to the line of scrimmage. They brought up that, that was really an eight man front that time they brought up Brian Dawkins and he came right up on the line of scrimmage. Look at this. Here's their free safety Brian Dawkins. So they have eight men up here. Now anytime you have eight men up there you're always going to have a free guy and the free guy is going to be Dawkins and he he caused that cutback. Second and eleven. Westbrook. Westbrook, who's a big target, covered by Troy Vincent. Hey, you talk about Westbrook being a big target. I mean, here's a guy who weighs 220 pounds. And, you know, you can run a slant with a guy like that because all he has to do is get right in there. Once he gets inside now, then he just turns his body and you, and you got that big target in there. Those are the, you know, I think the receivers in this league are getting bigger and bigger because of that. The passes are getting shorter and shorter, and the biggest pass of the short ones is the slant. And your cornerbacks better be bigger and bigger. That's Terry Allen right side for about five. Stopped by James Willis. You know, Terry Allen was saying last night that he really didn't practice all week and thought that that would probably bother him if that had been early in the, earlier in the season. But the fact that, you know, we're in the 11th game of the season, he but that missing a week of practice really isn't going to affect him in this game. Plus, it's a division game, and it's the second time they've played against the Eagles. The Eagles won the first time. The pass is caught by Jamie Asher, a diving reception. And they'll move the sticks again. Opening game of the stadium at RFK, season at RFK. The Eagles won 17-14. And the, and, the, and, the, and the Redskins are having good pass protection, and that's allowing their receivers to get downfield like that, like Asher is. But watch this protection here. 
You see that, you know, you know, big, strong guys, they form a pocket so that Gus Frott can step up and throw the ball. Gary Allen straight ahead, and he runs hard. You can see why respect is growing for him around the league. Yeah, every place you go, you know, you talk about the good players and the, you know, some guys that, you know, they're kind of underrated and, and stuff. And everyone, whether they're playing against the Washington Redskins or not, everyone talks about Terry Allen. And Ray Rhodes was even talking about Terry Allen when he was with Minnesota. Ray Rhodes was at Green Bay, said Terry Allen was at Minnesota, and Terry Allen got hurt and didn't play against the ones. He said he was the happiest guy in football that day. Second and four, Allen deep. He gets the carry again. He'll have close to a first down yardage. And I think he does have it. Rhett Hall made the stop. The one thing that the Redskins have to be able to do, if Terry Allen runs, then then the Eagles will go to that eight man front and we saw Brian Dawkins up there. They'll bring Michael Zordich up there get the eight man up there. Now when they get the eight man front then Gus Frott is going to have to be able to throw the ball because they only got three other guys. First and ten Redskins at the Eagle 41. almost came down with it. Bobby Taylor, good coverage, but it bounced off his hands, and Westbrook almost caught it. Well, we talked about that matchup. It's going to be Bobby Taylor on Westbrook all day, and and that's that's the the game plan of the Washington Redskins is to run Terry Allen, to use some possession type passing game, and also when you go for the big ones, they're going to go to Michael Westbrook. You're talking about. The wide receivers being bigger wide receivers, and of course, to play against those bigger wide receivers, the cornerbacks get bigger. And, and, and Bobby Taylor and Michael Westbrook, you got two guys both six foot three. Terry Allen, the ball carrier, got a couple of yards. You know, that's one thing about Norv Turner, and, and Norv Turner is one of the head coaches in this league who calls his own plays and calls calls a very good game. But he'll never get in a rut. I mean, he does, he's in a rut in November, as you can see here. And he's a rut against not being able to beat the Eagles. But he won't get in a rut in, call, in play calling. He's going to run the ball and run it. But then he'll go for a deep one. Then he'll go for a play pass. He really has good mixture. Then he's seven yards. Right. Gets it to Brooks. And Brooks is out of bounds at about the Eagle 21-yard line. First down, Redskins. And with Leslie Shepard out, then Bill Brooks becomes the third wide receiver today when the Redskins put in three wide receivers, and then they activated Flipper Anderson. So if they need or use a fourth wide receiver, it's going to be the old Ram, Flipper Anderson. There he is. Those are two backups. Flipper Anderson is nine years in the league. Bill Brooks, who just caught that ball, is an 11-year veteran. First and 10 at the 21. Stop by Hollis Thomas. You see big Trey Johnson pulling on that. And Terry Allen was telling us last night how, how it's really fun to run behind Trey Johnson because he said he's so big that even if he doesn't block a guy, a guy has to jump around him. He said he just blots out the thing. He said, I love to get in behind old Trey Johnson. Remember last year, he <laughs> yeah. used to say Trey, and he had this big thing up here on the E. It's, that's called an Agu accent, a goo. Now it just says E, E Johnson on his jersey. That's a large Agu. Allen makes the reception, knocked out of bounds at about the 15 by Michael Zordich. You know, when we're hey, Trey's one of those guys can't get the jersey all the way down in the back. I, I know. Up on I that know. Shelf. He either has too much back, too much uh, shoulder, or too little jersey. But, you know, Norv Turner was telling us last night that Trey Johnson, since the season has started, has lost 25 pounds. Where? Look at that guy. Set with belt. He lost it right in here, in this stuff, right up in here. He doesn't have as much stuff up in there as he used to have up in there. Third and four. That's the old left tackle started to pull on that before the ball was snapped. That was Joe Patton. Joe Patton was unabated. Yeah, he was he was going to his right as quickly as he could. Ball start. Prior to the snap, 
number 67. Five yard penalty. Still third down. I think it was number 68. Yep. Because here it is. He's he's right here. I think he's the guy that although although 67 uh, uh, did move too. 67 is sharp for Donish and he is the starting right tackle starting today for Ed Simmons that was out with an injury a mass violation here's Perot back to throw incomplete intended for Brooks and Blanton will come in to try a field goal good series by the Redskins and they had good mixture you know that that was that was the thing that they do they they went for their deep one. They tried to get it to Michael Westbrook. They they fed the ball to Terry Allen in a run. They hit their tight end, Jamie Asher. They put in a third wide receiver, Bill Brooks, and hit him. So they had good mixture, good mixture in run pass, good mixture in formations. Just didn't convert that third down play. 37 yard attempt by Blanton. Right down the center. And the Redskins start the scoring. They lead 3-0 over the Eagles with four seconds left in the first quarter. The Redskins three, Philadelphia nothing. The Redskins have scored every possession every time they've had the ball in the so-called red zone, which is the 20 or inside. 28 times and they're the only they're the only team yeah. in the NFL that does that and like I say I think the the amazing thing is that they scored every time but more amazing is how many touchdowns they scored with their spoon cut down at the 20 by James Jenkins. Witherspoon didn't like that too no. much. Yeah, he jumped up, went after him. He wanted some more action. That's the end of the first quarter. Redskins 3-0 over the Eagles. Back at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, the Redskins 3-0. The Eagles with the ball at their own 20. Ty Detmer is number 14. Quarterback. Back to throw it. Pass complete to Ricky Waters. Chased out of bounds. Yeah, you know, we talk about one of the good matchups out there today, and it's and it's Daryl Green, where he's going everywhere that Irving Fryer goes. That time Irving Fryer was on the right, Daryl Green was on him. And I think that Ty Detmer was trying to go to him. Watch here they are out there. Now these are these are two old veterans. I mean Irving Fryer 13 years in the league. Daryl Green 14 years in the league. That's pretty good coverage. First to 10 Philadelphia. Denver gets the water. Waters gets very little except a bunch of Redskins. I don't know what that talk is. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know which guy that was coming from, but that didn't seem like a healthy yes, 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 yes. You know, you were talking about Irving Fryer, Daryl Green, two old veterans. They are proof that old is a state of mind. They neither one play or act like they've been around as long as they have. Yeah, you know, like Daryl Green said, he just he just works hard, stays in shape, works all year. Sometimes the older you get, the harder you work and the better you are. Denver back to throw. Pass is picked off by Stanley Richard. Richard swings down. It's deep in the territory. Down to the 22-yard line. And that was the matchup we were just talking about, Pat. That was Irving Fryer. Daryl Green was covering a man-to-man. -man. They were trying to go deep to him. Stanley Richard is a free safety. But watch the matchup. It's out here. There's Daryl Green. Excuse me. It's right here. There's Daryl Green going man to man on Irving Fryer. Here's Stanley Richard coming over. Stanley Richard was a free safety. They were trying to get the post, but you can't throw the post in there when there's a free safety anyway. And he gets a 42 yard return and a good block out in front. Stanley Richard. 
I don't know what Ty Detmer saw. In fact, Ty Detmer probably didn't see anything because that's one thing that's been a rule from high school that you can't throw a post in there if the free safety sitting there. It's Terry Allen with nothing. Lost perhaps a yard. Mike Mamula was the first eagle there. You know, one thing about Norv Turner, we said he'll call the plays and he'll mix them up. And 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 the thing that I like about him is he'll take a shot. I mean, he's not a conservative guy. He's not one of those guys that's just going to get in this situation without checking this Eagle defense to see if they're covering something deep. I mean, somewhere in here, he is going to get deep. He is going to take a shot at him. And again, I would expect the shot would again be to Michael Westbrook. Second at about 12 as Allen lost to. Incomplete. Intended for Westbrook. And we're talking about what 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 Ty Detmer saw or didn't see. One thing right here, see he has pressure. So he probably didn't even see. In fact, you can see right there that he didn't see Stanley Richard. But before that pressure got there, he should be looking to see if anything took that free safety out of there. And if it didn't, you can't throw that post in there. That was a big pressure from Sean Gilbert. He just engulfed Ty Detmer. I mean, Ty Detmer didn't see, he couldn't see Irving Fryer. He couldn't see the sun. Here's Farad stepping up and firing out of bounds. Oh, I don't know that he had to fire that thing out of bounds, but it looked like he could have run with the ball. He could have. Yeah, I don't think there was anyone there in front of him. He could have run far enough to get close to a first down, but maybe he saw the penalty. Penalty. That's going to be a defensive penalty. That'll be an automatic first down. Illegal contact. Defense number 23. Five yard penalty. That's Troy first Benson. Down. And the thing is, is, is you, know, you, you know, maybe that's why he threw that ball out there, but you're going to see here's Troy Benson here. He gets over late on his guy on Henry Ellard, and you see the the push right there in the grip. Oh, I don't know about that. That's awfully tough. That's Terry Allen who gets the carry on first down and picked up two or three. Red Hall again made the stop. Yeah, I think the I think the Redskins really got a break on that play because Gus Farratt was throwing the ball away, but again, you know, Troy Vincent bumped the guy he was trying to throw to, but. After five yards, you can't touch him. And Troy Vincent did give him a bump after five yards. Redskins back inside that red zone, second and six, and Terry Allen gets the carry down close to the 10. Hollis Thomas made the stop. Jeff Kulinek now is is the is the center for the Redskins, and I think that they've become a better offensive line since he's been in there. I mean, he's a Eight year veteran number 55 there. Remember they got him from Miami. I think you put him in there and, and Trey Johnson on one side and Bob Dahl on the other side. You got two big guards in the middle with a good center. Flag on the play as Terry Allen trips again and is taken down by William Thomas. And there's another penalty on the play. Full start prior to the snap number 75. Five yard penalty, still third down. Number 75 was one of those big guards I was just talking about, Bob Dahl. Bob Dahl weighs about 325 pounds. Trey Johnson, probably, you know, Trey Johnson when he started was like 340 or 50, and he's probably down to 325 now. So, Noah Turner says, <clears throat> excuse me, that Bob Dahl might be a little heavy. Yeah, and, and he's not having as good a year as as Norv expected. Although Trey Johnson is having a good year. He's he's a guy that's really playing well for him. Farad back to throw. Incomplete pick out by Benson. And the Eagles dodge a bullet. Jamie Asher, the guy that tipped the ball, is getting in a fight there. I think that's one of those frustration things. Jamie Asher is number 84, and he's going to run to the inside, and the ball is going to be thrown right here. You see, he just hooks right there. The ball goes through his hands. Troy Vincent is there for the interception. There is still a discussion going on among the officials 
I didn't see a flag, but I see two hats. Well, when you see hats in the ground, that usually means that someone went out of bounds or something. And they're still discussing something. But it looks like the Eagles ball. We have a personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense after the interception during the return, hit to the face. So it was a personal foul against the Eagles after the interception, so they penalize them back to the two and a half yard line. Watch this. It's always the second guy. Here's Jamie Asher. He's going to take a punch at James Willis. He misses Willis. Willis punches Jamie Asher. Look at the swing and the miss. Watch Willis, number 50 here. Go boom. That's the one that they see. Yep. Never fails, does Asher it? threw a big old haymaker and just got air. Willis got Asher. The officials guys Asher. come down again. False start prior to the snap. Offense number 76. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Baird Brookie. Uh, Baird Brooks. Oh, I'm sorry. The rookies. The degree hottest rookies. Eddie George of the Oilers, Eddie Kennison, and Lawrence Phillips of the Rams. First and 12. Three, three. Gets the Waters, who gets out to about the yard and a half yard line. Yeah, the first goal here, once you get backed up like this, uh, we always wanted to get out to the five yard line because your punter, if you have to punt, needs 15 yards. He's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So with the ball right here, your first goal is to get it here to the five yard line. Then if you have to punt, your punter has five yards. Then after that, then you then you try and get it outside the 10 and the 20. And, and of course, the Eagles had a punt block last week against Buffalo. Second and 11. got his room out close to the 11-yard line. And that's always a dangerous thing when you throw out of your own end zone because you know if you get sacked, it's two points. Plus, if you have a holding penalty in the end zone, see all the guys are pass blocking in the end zone. If you have a holding penalty in there, that's a safety in two points. So Ty Detmer went back there. He knew where he was going. He was taking that ball right to Ricky Waters right away. Third and short. About a half yard to get the Eagles a first down. Close. At the lead block, and Kevin Turner got right in there behind Lester Holmes, his right guard. That is going to be pretty close. They've already moved the sticks. So the Eagles get some breathing room out. And so they, they settle down to about the 14-yard line. Well, they get their first goal was to get the ball out past the five. Then their next goal is to get a first down. And Ricky Waters got it there just with that little extra lunge at the end as he was going down. Denver on first down to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Christy Jones. Carter all over him. Yeah, we talked about Daryl Green was going to be on Irving Fryer, who hasn't caught a pass yet. So that means that Tom Carter then will be on Christy Jones. Because when you have one matchup, then you have to take the other matchup. And here they are right down here. Defense, number 25. First down. Again, you see, he's okay there. And then his left arm grabbed him while the ball was in the air. So you can hit him five yards when the ball's in the air. You can't touch him until the ball gets there. That amounts to a 12-yard penalty and another eagle first down. Lost the ball. Redskins have it. Oh, watch him get on Ricky Waters now. Ricky Waters runs and gains a lot of yards, catches a lot of pass, but the other thing he does as he fumbles, 
Look at that, 17 fumbles in the last two-plus seasons. That's most by any running back in the league. It's one thing to want the ball, but if you want it and get it, you got to keep it. Yeah, and you know, he's never really secured the ball well, especially when he gets in the hole. When you get in the hole and you get all those defenders around there, you have to have that second hand on the ball, and that has been one of Ricky Waters' problems. You'll get in the hole. You see, he's in the hole right now. Now you have to have that second hand on the ball. And Ken Harvey makes the recovery. And when you have more fumbles than any other running back in the league, every defender is going to go after the ball when you have it. First and 10 Redskins. This is Terry Allen. And the Eagles do a good job. Mamula was the first man to make him cut back. That's the thing that Mamula did. He got up there and got penetration. And that's the, that's, that's the way to stop the running game. You just have to get up, get in the backfield. You see Mamula here. He's going to get up to a point here. Now, when you get beyond this point, when, when, when you get behind that offensive line, there's no way they're going to run the ball to that side. You see Mamula, when he gets right there, there was nothing Terry Allen could do. Second and 12. For Westbrook, the receiver, doesn't get enough for a first down, but very close. You know, Sharp Pordonish uh, is is playing right tackle. We talked about that for for Ed Simmons today, and he draws William Fuller, who is one of the the better pass rushers on this Eagle team, and he's doing a pretty good job against Fuller. If you just look at this right side here, here's Fuller here, and that's that's not an easy job. But Pordonish has been in doing a pretty good job of pass protection. You see, he just lets him go to the outside, and then if that end wants to stay out there and run up the field, you just get that second push and push him right beyond the quarterback. About a half ball short of first down, first down yardage on that completion from Farratt to Westbrook. Usually a half ball short will be a quarterback sneak. Yeah. I don't know. They're taking a long time to call this. You know, North Turner is the type of guy that, with this type of things, could say he'll go for it on fourth down, could go play pass and try and get a big one on this down. Third and a half ball for a first down. Just past the paint is all he needs. Right, and he gets it. Yep, I think those two things go hand in hand: a half ball short and a quarterback sneak. Because all that quarterback has to do is get down anywhere, and they're going to give him the first down. And we talked about the opportunities that you know, the Redskins had made every time they got inside the 20, and then last time they were there, they threw the interception. Willis is the injured eagle. Three nothing Redskins, but the Redskins close again. Washington three Eagles nothing and here's James Willis Pat and watch what happens here they start to block they get a good push here and they get down in here Joe Patton gets his knee see Patton goes to double team and, and right there you see he uh -huh. got James Willis's right knee this is Terry Allen and not much for Terry down to about the 11 stopped by Joe Kelly just replaced Willis Joe Kelly was a guy that Ray Rose was really upset with last week because Joe Kelly was the guy that was supposed to block the guy that blocked the punt against Buffalo against Buffalo and Buffalo got a not only blocked the punt but they got a touchdown on the block punt they blocked it and recovered it picked it up and ran it in and so Joe Kelly's not playing that position anymore and he's in Ray Rhodes's doghouse and low and below here he is uh, in linebacker Backs out, that ball slipped out of his hand or was deflected or something went wrong. Maybe he tried to bring it back and it had gone too far. But it wasn't a pretty thing. I think he tried to bring it back. I don't I don't think this ball was touched. Just watch it come out of there. I think he tried to change change directions of the ball. It looked like he yeah. was trying to throw it inside and then tried to throw it outside. And the result is is like a curveball or a drop in baseball. That bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, you get that 
that flick of the wrist, that turn that you try and get action on the ball. Third and eight. Brought back to throw it again. Touchdown, Redskins Asher in the corner of the end zone. Remember the last time they were down there when they got that interception? That's who they were trying to go to in that same spot on the field. They were trying to go to Jamie Asher, their tight end. The ball went through his hands, and Troy Vincent got it. This time, Norv Turner came back with the same type of play and got the touchdown. And he had to, this is a touch pass. He had to get it over the defend, defenders and into his hands. Yeah, here's Jamie Asher here. Again, he's working against a linebacker in a zone, and once he breaks out of there and, and he gets past that short area in the zone, there's no one there in the deep area. A good throw by Gus Ferrat. The extra point by Blanton is good, and the Redskins lead the Eagles 10-0. Six plays, 25 yards after the Ricky Waters fumble. Asher from Ferrat, 12 yards out, got the touchdown. There's Rodney Pete, who started the season as the Red, as the Eagle quarterback, beat the Redskins on opening day. Was injured against Dallas. He's still around. Remember that game, though. He started out in that first quarter. He was as hot oh, as I'd yeah. ever seen Rodney Pete. With a spoon down it in the end zone, and the Eagles take over at their own 20. Let's watch a touchdown again, Pat. And, and here's Jamie Asher. He's going to catch a ball. But now you can see the Eagles are in a zone. But what happens is they get picked here. Both the defensive backs get picked. And then when Jamie Asher gets behind the linebacker, Farmer, he's wide open. But watch what happens as we come here. The outside receiver, Henry, Henry Ellard, runs right in here into the two defensive backs. Now, they couldn't get off, so it was kind of a pick. And then Jamie Asher was wide open. So it was beyond the short guy in the zone and in front of the deep guys. And it's 10 nothing Washington Whoa. as Detmer goes back to throw a screen pass after Waters. Waters with some room and Ricky Waters knocked out of bounds by Stanley Richards up close to midfield. I think Ricky Waters wants to be a one-man gang now. I mean, he knows what, what, what happened last week. They lost. He didn't get the ball. He, you know, he popped off. He pouted. Then he comes in here and he fumbles. And, and he says to himself, you know, that I better get this thing straightened out. And, and you can just see the way that he runs up the field here, that he is running with a heck of a lot of resolve, if that's the word. And anger. Lovely anger. Too. You know, you can yeah. always get angry at everyone else, but sometimes you got to get angry with yourself. Jetmer back to throw. Irving Fryer makes the catch. Let's go back to the Fox Television Center for McDonald's game break. Pat, I showed you earlier where Kansas City spotted the Bears seven. Well, the Chiefs answered right back. Play action, Bono to Chris Penn, 20 yards to Pater, all tied at Arrowhead. Back to Philadelphia, Pat and John. At Veterans Stadium, it's 10 nothing Redskins. 5:45 left to play in the first half. Second and one, Philadelphia. Fryer motion. First down inside the 40, about the 37. Stanley Richard made the stop. Let's check out our Aflac trivia question. In what season did John Madden go undefeated as the head coach? Can't help you, John. And, well, huh? yeah, and you can't help. I can't. I can't help myself. <laughs> you can't I don't, help yourself. I don't. I don't know when it was. First and ten. I don't remember it. Waters goes in motion. Denver gets it up to Turner. Let's get back there. I'm anxious to know myself, and I know you are. I am, too. I, you can't remember one, doing that? I remember once uh, I, had a, I was, you know, a couple times we lost one game. Oh, <laughs> never did. But his sons, Joe and Mike, coached the Foothill High School to an 8-0 and record this year. This week, in fact. Yeah, well, yeah, Mike's the head coach, and Joe's the, Joe's the line coach. And they went undefeated, so I guess they were the first Madden to ever go undefeated. <laughs> I bet Mike's a player's coach. Here's Waters. Uh, he surges down near another Eagle first down. 
with that last little leap. Yeah, it looked like the Eagles offense had a meeting with themselves over on the sideline and, and decided, hey, we've been kind of asleep out here, and, and, and someone on this drive had given them a wake-up call. And it could be the fact that the, you know, the last time they had the ball, they fumbled, and the Redskins took it in and scored a touchdown, and the Eagles are down 10 to nothing. That could wake them up. Ray Rhodes, the head coach, could wake him up. Yeah, he could do that. Yeah, he he has a tendency to to want to do that, and you know, and, I, mean, I mean, he has to be real upset the way this thing's going. Yeah, it's first because down, his team up. is getting whipped. First down, Eagles now here. And I well, said I, that they're waking up, and this is what they're they're waking up from. I mean, you just see that they just haven't been able to get anything going, and you know, and the turnovers, and you know. And the Redskins are playing pretty good defense. First and ten. This is totally opposite from the first meeting between these two. Here's Denver. Solid waters. Picked up four, perhaps five. Tom Carter, the defender. You know, Ricky, excuse me. If Ricky Waters wanted the ball, He's had the ball today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting that, and you know, and he thinks that 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 he's the guy. And there's John Gruden who who calls the plays, and and four or five times this year, he and he and Ricky Waters have gotten into it, and Ray Rhodes has kind of had to come India! between them. And I kind of think that you know that you can't feed one player. And, you know, if, if it doesn't go that way, you have to mix up things. Not much. A couple, maybe. Waters has had his opportunities today. 72% of the carries, 80% of the rushing yards, 37% of the total touches and total yards, 33%. So his argument that uh, we win, we do better when I have the ball, those figures you just saw were, were for this season. Today, I would imagine all of them are higher than that. Here's Denver no back to throw. Shit. Gets it out to Christy Jones. And Jones goes out of bounds at the one. And see, and that'll get things going because when you do get Ricky Waters going and you and, and you are throwing the ball and you get the run, and then then the Redskins tighten up, then you can go play fast, then you can get the ball to Irving Fryer, and in that just case of uh, Chris T. Jones, 19-yard pickup. Chris T. Jones is working here now. He's gonna he's gonna come in across when the motion goes outside, so that takes the bump off him. He comes underneath everything, including the umpire. First and goal at the one. Waters. Touchdown. Ricky Waters into the end zone from a yard out. The big play before that was to Christy Jones, but most of this drive, I have to say, was Ricky Waters. And you could just tell that after that fumble that, you know, that he got up, that the, this whole Eagle offense got up, and that was a different football team on this drive than they had been before that. Here's the touchdown. Here he gets the lead. He's playing in the fullback position. He waits a little while. You see, it, it, it's hard to have patience as a running back, especially on the goal line. But Ricky Waters had patience down there. Anderson's extra point is good, and it's 10-7. Redskins lead the Eagles. But a very impressive drive by Philadelphia. Here, here's Chris T. Jones right here in the cross, and look at the help that he gets. He gets, he gets the umpire here, and he gets a teammate. And that's that's the thing when you run on a cross, you try and run under everything. He ran under everything, and at the end, it ran right into our cameraman. The cameraman didn't go down, though. No. You see that? Snap right back. Kickoff goes out of bounds. Oh, they'll start booing now. Oh, yeah. They'll bring it up to the 40-yard line. As we talked about this, if there's any one area of this football team. Kicking team ball will be placed. First down. There's anything that, that that they're really upset in this town about this team. It's their special teams. We 
get the two minute warning. 10 7 Washington. <laughs> There's our cameraman Don Cornelli who just got hit by Christy Jones. What this did is, he see? This is what it looks like if you were him. If you were Christy Jones, that's what it looks like. If you were Don Cornelli, this is what it looks like. <laughs> I think I think when I think when you got a shot of the sky is yeah. when the when the when the head went down and the feet went up. But he snapped right back. Incomplete. Just over the head of Asher. I'll tell you, Mike Mamula came from yeah. that backside of Farad and hit him just as he threw the ball. Yeah. Never saw him. I thought he didn't. He didn't see him. You wonder if he feels him here. Here's here's Mike Mamula, and watch how he comes from that backside, and he just goes by Patton right there. Farad throws the ball. Mamula was going for his arm as he was throwing it. He felt him if he didn't see him. Logan goes in motion and hits Farad back to throw. gets the first down but there's a flag on the play and it's in the it's in that area of offensive holding too exactly right Walt Coleman again as the referee and Gus Farad knew that he had to get rid of that ball quickly that uh, play before Mabula was was right there on him he did get rid of that one quickly had enough for the first down but not enough to beat this one Offense, number 77, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Call against Trey Johnson. Yeah, number 77 is Trey Johnson. He's right here. And again, you just see him in there, and he, he grabs Red Hall's right arm. You yep. see that? Sometimes that happens in pass protection. You get your hands in there, then your hand gets underneath their arm, and as they go by you, they put you in a holding position. Second and 20, three wide receivers for Washington. Rock gives to Brian Mitchell. Mitchell gets about six, stopped by William Thomas. Well, did Trey Johnson turn Red Hall on that play? I mean, Trey Johnson is so big and so strong, he just fired into Red Hall and just with one arm just turned him. Fifteen. Brought back to throw. Now it's time. Henry Ellard makes the catch. Oh, that was a big first down for the Redskins. Now they can take a timeout because the Eagles had taken a timeout. They had them third and long. If they stopped them, they were going to get the ball back. But here it is. The the Redskins get the first down right here. Just watch. Henry Ellard just just runs it, and and they were playing a loose type of zone kind of a prevent type thing because it was it was third and 12 and and they just let him Troy Vincent just got off there a little soft and let Henry Eller to get right in front of him and catch that ball for a first down 23 yard pickup for Rod to Ellard 10 7 a minute and a half left yeah you know, we talk about guys that have been playing in this league for a long time and doing things how about Henry Eller this is his 14th year in the league both teams have two timeouts remaining. A minute and a half left until halftime. First and ten Redskins at the Eagle 42. Oh, oh, shit. Back to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Dumps it outside to Brian Mitchell, who gets to about the 35. I think what the Redskins have to do now is they want to get in field goal position. I would say they need about seven or eight more yards to be in field goal position. Then after you get in field goal position, then you go for the touchdown. Incomplete intended for Ellard. And Mamula, Mamula was awfully close again. Mike Mamula was right there as Gus Farad throws that ball. You're going to see, see he's in a stand-up position now. Joe Patton is having a heck of a lot of trouble with Mike Mamula. And, and Gus Farad can't be watching that, but I know that he has to be feeling it and know that he has to get rid of the ball quickly. He is very quick. And can get around the corner. 
after you think he's blocked. If the Redskins don't make any yardage here, this would be a 53-yard field goal they'd have to try. Westbrook and Westbrook takes the perfect strike from Perot, Bobby Taylor, and Brian Dawkins on the coverage, but that's the Redskin first down. And they have to use a timeout. Redskins in field goal range now definitely leading 10 7. Back at Veteran Stadium. Don't forget to stay with us for the Dockers Khakis halftime report with JB and Terry highlights the scores from around the league. First down, Redskins, the ball at the Philadelphia 26-yard line. First and 10. Brian Mitchell is behind Gus Farad. Back to throw. And 10 in the end zone for Westbrook. And no penalty call. No flags. Incomplete. It was just, it's just like we were talking about with North Turner. You know that when he gets down there, he's going to take a shot. And when he's going to take the shot, he's going to take it to Michael Westbrook, and that's exactly what he did. Now, again, the Redskins only have one timeout. What you want to do in this situation is you want to save your timeout for your field goal team. So then if you're going to do that, you have to pass the ball, and you have to throw it to the sidelines or the end zone. 44 seconds left before halftime. Redskins, second down. Ron goes back to throw. The Eagles a blitz. Rod got rid of it. A flag on the play. Now the flag was on the opposite side of the field. It wasn't on the side of the field where the ball was thrown. Eagles blitz for Rod. He got rid of the ball. It's on the side of the field where it's going to be. It, it, it can't be interference because, as I said, the ball was thrown to the right. The flag is on the left side of the field. So it'll probably be defensive holding which again would be an automatic first down. Walt Coleman. We have a personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense, number 23, half the distance to the goal, first down. Called against Troy Vinson. Yeah, Troy Vinson is right up here, and you see right coming off the ball, he just grabbed the face mask. Now that was on the left side of the offense. The ball was thrown to the right side of the offense. So it's a first down for Washington at the Eagle 13 yard line. They still have that one timeout remaining. First and 10. Farad puts Henry Ellard wide left. Westbrook is put out wide to the right. Brooks inside to the right. And here is Gus Farad to throw. Intended again for Jamie Asher, who tripped right at the goal line incomplete. And you know the other thing is Jamie Asher came out of the out of the shade right into the sun on that play. Looks like and, he lost it. And it looked like he may have lost it as he comes out. Here he is right here. And you see he's in the shade. Now watch when he breaks right there. He comes into the sun. And I don't know that he didn't lose that ball in the sun, even though that was thrown a little behind him. We can stand up here and make excuses yeah. for him. You know, the sun was in my eyes. I was in the shade. Come out of the shade, into the sun. Second down. Rod gets to Mitchell. Down to the 10. Clock shows 27 seconds now. They have time to run another play? I don't think so because, yeah, at, at, at 20 seconds they do. Yeah. If, if they don't use their timeout, then they're going to have to run the play, but they don't have to get into the end zone because they still have one timeout left. Eight seconds on the clock. They give to Brian Mitchell, and Mitchell gets down to the five. Not enough for the first down. Now they use the timeout, and here comes the field goal team. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised at two runs there. Yeah, uh, yeah, because we talked about North Turner usually taking a shot. He did take a couple of shots. He took to Asher. He went to Westbrook. And then Mitchell, I know he tried to pop that draw because he did the same thing a week ago and was successful. I'm just a little surprised at, at two draws in a row. 
So they used the last time out to get the field goal unit on the field. And from there with fourth and about two. Look at this how the kicker always stands by himself because one he doesn't want to get up there with the rest of his teammates but he doesn't want to hear anything that these guys back here might have to say to him. Now he has to sneak <laughs> up there to check that spot though. But see, he doesn't want anyone talking to him. You know, I mean, saying to come on, say, cool, you got to make this, anything. There's nothing you can say to a kicker. Remember George Blanda used to tell me, oh, just keep everyone away from me and don't let anyone talk to me. Blanton from 23 yards away. The field goal is good. And it's 13 to 7. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, the Washington Redskins 13, Philadelphia 7, James Brown and Terry Bradshaw will be along with the Dockers Khakis halftime report following. The Redskins lead the Eagles 13-7. We're at halftime at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. John, pretty good first half. Anything surprise you? Yeah, it was a it was a real good first half. I think the, the Redskins came out and they're more ready to play than the Eagles, and I think they really beat them to the punch. The biggest surprise was just before halftime there when the Redskins, I was talking all the time about how North Turner, once he gets down there, he's going to take a shot, that he ran two draw plays and didn't take a shot. I mean, I could see one draw play, but I thought that he should have taken a shot at the end zone before he settled for the field goal. Norv Turner's got his team back on the sideline. Let's look at the first half statistics. 35 rushing yards for the Redskins, 49 for the Eagles. Passing yards, a little bit of an edge to the Redskins. Total about even. Turnovers, two to one. The Eagles have had two, the Redskins won. The Redskins got their touchdown as a result of a turnover. Penalties even as well. So turnovers one more time. Especially when you get to this point of the season and down the stretch, turnover is a big, big factor. And I think that the Eagles special teams are still killing them because yeah. the Redskins have gotten such good field position. You know, even on the kickoff, remember the last time the Eagles kicked off, they kicked it out of bounds, and the and the Redskins got the ball on the 40-yard line. So when you play against the Eagles kicking team, one thing you're pretty much assured of is you're going to have good starting position. And that has to be killing Ray Rhodes. Well, you know, when you got Brian Mitchell, he had two long returns in the season opener between these two teams and set up, in fact, the Redskins touchdowns. Anderson does not have the capability, really, strength wise, to get the ball deep and into the end zone. Yeah, and I think in doing so, he's trying to, you know, keep the ball away from Mitchell, and then he kicks the doggone thing out of bounds. So those are the things, you know, kickers drive coaches crazy anyway. And those are the things that are really driving crazy. Mitchell at the five. Comes out of the pack, and Brian Mitchell gets it out to the 30. A good return. James Fuller made the tackle. Gus Ferrat, a steady first half. Let's look at his passing by distance. Well, you see in the short ones, uh, he was two out of three. Six to ten, he was four out of five. Eleven to fifteen, two out of six. And then only one out of six taking their shots. And maybe that's one of the things North Turner was thinking of just before halftime that they should take a shot, but they hadn't been real successful at doing that. Here's Farad. And as one of the Eagles went by, knocked the ball out of Farad's hands. And the Redskins are lucky to get it back. Joe Patton came up with the ball, recovered by number 68. Let's see who knocked it loose. Well, you're going to see it comes from his right side. You see, he's looking to the right. And then Fuller comes in there, and that's that's exactly who it was. It was William Fuller. Yep. He just reached his left hand in there. Farratt was looking, had the ball down low. William Fuller reached in and knocked it right out of his hand. Second and 12. Terry Allen gets the carry and gets it out past the line of scrimmage. Picked up about four or five, perhaps. Terry Allen doesn't spend a lot of time in the backfield, does he? Oh, no, he I mean, doesn't. You know, you have to start in the backfield if you're running back, and you have to stay there until the ball snapped. But once that ball is snapped, 
I'll tell you, he is going to get into and through that line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. He now has 1,003 yards rushing. That's his third straight 1,000-yard season. And he hasn't had a big day today. Three wide receivers. And Mitchell with Barat. Barat wheels it outside to Ellard. And Ellard gets down to the Eagle 41-yard line, William Thomas. I tell you, Michael Zordich was right there with Ellard. And, and as the ball was thrown, Zordich kind of goes for it and just takes a wave at it and misses it. What Zordich, he's number 36. He's going to come across. You see him right there? He just took the swing and missed at it, and Ellard was right there with the concentration. Watch him. It goes right, it, it, it goes right beyond Zordich's hand into Henry Ellard. Uh, first down, Redskins at the Eagle 42, two tight ends set up. And Terry Allen breaks into the secondary. Allen down to the Eagle 24, and a flag on the play. Brian Dawkins, the safety man, made the stop. This might be a face mask at the end of the run. And the Eagles were in that eight-man front. They were bringing Michael Zordich up late to the weak side, and it didn't help because Terry Allen just kept the ball to the face strong mask, side. Five yards, number 20 on the defense. Call against Dawkins. He had to make the stop. Yeah, Brian Dawkins is the other safety. He's the free safety, number 20, and the face mask comes right at the end of the play. In fact, the face mask helped him get Terry Allen down. Yep. Might have saved a touchdown. The run was 17 yards. The penalty five. It's a first down. Redskins at the Eagle 21. Allen again. Picked up three. Stopped by William Thomas. William Thomas played that well. You know, you know the one thing when a when a guy starts to run away from you. You can't get even with him or go beyond because then you'll give him the cutback. So William Thomas, when Terry Allen starts away, William Thomas has the cutback. And he has to keep leverage, keep him outside of you, and that's exactly what he did. Second and eight. Two tight ends set up. Gets it to Scott Galbraith. And Galbraith moves down inside the Eagle 10 to about the eight. Stopped by Ray Farmer, but it'll be first and goal, Washington. I bet you North Turner has some different plays here. He's not going to run those draws to Mitchell down here again, but he's had pretty good success in this in this game so far with the tight end. Jamie Asher caught a touchdown and some other balls. That time that was Scott Galbraith playing tight end. So the tight end position has had, had more success than the wide receiver position. First and goal at the eight, Washington. Terry Allen. And the line of scrimmage hit by Hollis Thomas. I tell you now, there is a there is a short load that Hollis Thomas, isn't he? He's one of Ray Rhodes' favorite players. He's only six feet tall, you yep. know, and that's why he really wasn't drafted. He's a free agent, undrafted free agent, but he weighs about 320 pounds. Well, <laughs> and when Terry Allen went to when went, went to cut back in the there's Hollis Thomas just waiting there. We asked Ray Rhodes about his weight. He said he was about two biscuits shy of 320. Barat back to throw. Capture had it and it bounced away. He's pointing it like as if he was interfered with. I don't think he was. Yeah, he was pointing at Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent was back there and he was saying that Troy Vincent held him. You're going to see Asher is right here, right in the middle of the screen, number 20, uh, 84. And that's that's not interference. That was no interference. But you see, he's right there. He's just going for the ball in front of him. Troy Vincent really had good position on that one. Third and goal. From the seven. Two tight ends again. Touchdown. Jamie Asher, his second of the day, and that one. He just hit him right in the numbers. He didn't even see it coming. I tell you, he was on Troy Vincent again. Troy Vincent got the one before that. Gus Farad quickly got rid of the ball, threw it to Asher again. Again on Troy Vincent, you're going to see him here in the slot. He's just going to come up, 
and then he's going to get right across the goal line. You see, and there's Troy Vinson, the closest guy there. The Eagles were playing some kind of zone, and when a quarterback throws a dart the way Farratt does, you can't play zone in the end zone. Farratt got up in time to signal touchdown. Now they can signal extra point. And the Redskins have taken a 20 to 7 lead over Philadelphia. Back in Philadelphia. We're at Veterans Stadium where Jamie Asher's just caught his second touchdown pass. Put the Redskins ahead 20 to 7. 10 to 30 left to play in the third quarter. That's Witherspoon. At about the 22. Let's look at that touchdown again. Well, you know, it's against a zone defense, and as I said, here's Jamie Asher. He's right here. And we'll watch the zone where they're going to be playing a zone all the way across here. And Asher just gets right in the hole of a zone. And 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 the the big thing here, in fact, we can just stop it here. We can see here's Asher and see he's right between the zone. But the big thing here is the way that Gus Farratt zipped that ball in there. Because that had to get there then or it was going to be knocked down. That's a good example of timing between a quarterback and a receiver. Here's to Irving Fryer. You know, if you look at what Ty Detmer has done in a, you know, in a 10-yard box, in other words, just, you know, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, the only incomplete pass that he had was this one here. He was eight out of nine in that area. So, so he's been successful with those short passes but they haven't been able to put enough of them together. Three wide receivers set up. And Denver back to throw. Fryer again. That's it up for an eagle first down. Fryer is going to be covered and has been well all day long by Daryl Green. Yeah, and that's 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 a good matchup, and that's the third pass that Irving Fryer catches. Here it's just a little short out. And you see Stanley Richard was really on him that time because I think what the Redskins were doing is when they got in the slot I think they were going to zone it or on that play they were zoning it. First and ten. Friars the man in motion. Ricky Waters steps into the secondary. Stopped by Daryl Morrison. But a nine yard game by Waters. Ricky Waters was a, a big part of this offense in the first half. You know, you, you were saying how the percentages would go up. Look at that. Of times carried the ball, he was 94%. Rushing yards, he was 98% of their rushing yards. 79% of their total touches and 67% of their total yards. Waters with that carry. Now that game goes over 1,000 also. He and Allen both over 1,000 yards. Now this is going Crosses into Redskin territory to about their 47, stopped by Morrison again. Yeah, that's one of the problems that John Gruden is having with this Eagle offense, and I, I don't think you can let it be a problem. Is, is you have Charlie Garner, who you know can break a big play, but you have Ricky Waters, and you don't want to take him out of the game, and he doesn't want to come out of the game, and he doesn't want Charlie Garner to get the ball, but Garner is, is a breakaway guy. And then you have Irving Fryer, and as I said earlier, you only have one football, but John Gruden can't let that affect him. On first down, it's Garner again. And Charlie Garner down the sideline, still on his feet, down to the Redskin 26-yard line. Stopped by Richard. What an effort by Garner. Sometimes you need something like this to give you life. I mean, when you're down, the Redskins have been beating them to the punch all day. They've been beating the Eagles, and they need someone to come in and give them a new life. Charlie Garner does there. Daryl Green misses a tackle. Two or three more missed tackles, and Charlie Garner is up inside the 30-yard line with a first down. 21-yard run by Charlie Garner. Most of that done on his own. And missed tackles by the Redskins. This is Garner. about the 15-16 yard line. Uh, this was the thing that the Redskins were really worried about because they knew 
that these guys have hurt them the last three games. Look at this. Combined, they've run 101 times for 567 yards, 5.6 yards per carry, and five touchdowns. The combination of Charlie Garner and Ricky Waters the last three games have really killed the Redskins. Charlie Garner limping off now. After those three outstanding runs, and Ricky Waters is back on second and one. But he did give this offense some life. Waters. Good have the first down. He's going to be very close. Like you said, Charlie Gardner came in here, had three carries, but he gained 41 yards with those three carries. And even more than that, I think, I think that he picked up this entire offensive team and this entire crowd here. Well, he came limping off, and that's really been his problem as long as he's been with the Eagles. Injuries. I think that's one of the reasons that they don't run him like that all the time, but they do like to split him out and get him the ball sometimes. Waters is deep. And he gets the carry. Down to the 17-yard line, stopped by Rich Owens. There's Charlie Garner. Charlie Gardner has that has that tape on the on the outside of the shoe. So they're checking the ankle and what they can do is they could they can just tape right outside the shoe again. Here's the play that he got hurt on and you can just see that, that, that his ankle was was caught in the ground as he was trying to get an extra yard. Second and eight three wide receivers oh, wow. hey. back to throw. Chris T. Jones walks into the end zone from Ty Detmer. 13-yard touchdown pass. John Gruden not smiling, but he has to be happy. Well, he had good mixture. He put Charlie Garner in there, gave him the ball. Charlie Garner gave him the life. Chris T. Jones gets a touchdown pass. Ty Detmer gets a throw. But the life for this drive was given by Charlie Garner. Here's Chris D. Jones coming all the way across again under, underneath that umpire. We saw him in the first half get that same play down on the other end of the field. Anderson's extra point is good. Garner is still limping, but he ignited that drive. Finished off by this touchdown pass. Here's Chris T. Jones. He's going to run a crossing pattern, but watch Irving Fryer. He runs a deeper cross, so you get a crisscross. Everyone goes here with Irving Fryer, and Chris T. Jones can come underneath it. You see Fryer's deeper. Boom, he catches them all there. Chris T. Jones on the crisscross comes underneath as the short guy, even underneath the umpire to get that touchdown. Brian Mitchell. <laughs> Special teams in green rose to the occasion that time. So these Brian fans, Mitchell rise. And these fans know about their special teams here. They're even excited about that kickoff coverage. <laughs> so is the coach. Now we're talking. 20 to 14. This game summary brought to you by Budweiser, Jamie Asher. The Redskin tight end has two touchdown receptions. The fourth 1,000 yard rushing season for him. Ricky Waters is also over 1,000 yards. First and 10 Redskins at their own 25. Gus Farrar. Henry Ellard. Ellard from behind by Troy Vincent. Flag on the play. Flags all over the place. I don't think there's anybody that runs an in pattern. Other than Michael Irvin, better than Henry Ellard. I agree. I mean, Henry Ellard can do that. He can run those ins as that was or an out. He's been doing it for 14 years as well as anyone. Face mask called again. And here he is against Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent trying to be physical with him. You see how Henry Ellard holds him? Face mask on the defense, number 23. 15 yards. Against First Benson. Down. And got him by the face mask. That's the 23-yard variety. In other words, there's a five if they just think it's incidental. 
if they think it's unsportsmanlike conduct or unnecessary roughness, then it's 15 yards. So Troy Vincent got beaten every way you could. I mean, Henry Ellard beat him off the line, beat him on the end, caught the ball. And then, on top of that, Troy Vincent had a 15-yard penalty. That takes a long time to describe. This is Terry Allen inside the 20, ripping him up. Michael Zordich brought him down right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat and John, take a look at this. What's your call? Steve Berline back looking for Wesley Wall. Touchdown, no. Three-minute discussion. They did give him the touchdown. It's all tied in St. Louis. Back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. At Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, it's 20 to 10, uh, 20 to 14. Redskins over the Eagles, but the Redskins back inside the Eagle 20. Terry Allen bounces back. Cuts back to the 15. Michael Zordich brought him down this time. And they, when, you know, I mean, this, you, you said it earlier, you know, in Eastern Division uh, yep. a rivalry, uh, you know, the, I mean, the Eagles and the Redskins in Philadelphia, the, both teams seven and three fighting for first place. And now it has that kind of feel. I mean, every time someone punches, boom, the other team counterpunches. It's something different. Right. I mean, the, the, the Eagles got some life from Charlie Garner, and now the Redskins come right back with their own life. Right. Ooh, that was a dangerous play. He whirled around, did a spin, tried to throw a screen pass to Mark Logan. And there was an Eagle defender right there. Yeah, it's Joe Kelly, the middle linebacker. He started in kind of a blitz. Then he came off the blitz, and he was right there with Logan. He didn't know what the heck he was doing, I don't think, and he just fell into that one. Yeah, Farad had no idea he was there. Because they had Ray Farmer blitzing along with Joe Kelly. Kelly got blocked, and as he came off the block, there was a screen pass. Three wide receivers and Brian Mitchell. Mamula faked. Patton took the fake. And this is going to be against Patton. Now, well, you know, they put in a rule a couple years ago that if the Ball defense start, moves. Prior to the snap, number 68, five yard penalty, field third down. If this guy moves first and makes him move, then the penalty should be against him. Let's see who moves first. You see, he does it, he does it. Yeah. I think that should be a defensive penalty. Because the movement of Mike Mamula caused Joe Patton to move. They put that rule in because Neil Smith had made an art, or developed an art of pulling people off sides while he was on defense. And that's exactly what Mike Mamula did on that play. Here's Farad. Outside Asher. And Asher's wrestled to the ground by Michael Zordich. Out of bounds. We should stop the clock at about the 13 yard line. Scott Blanton comes on the scene. This Eagle defense has done a good job on Michael Westbrook because, they, you know, the guy that is going to make a big play, the guy that you would go to in the end zone in that situation would be Michael Westbrook, and he's been covered pretty well by this Eagle defense. And Henry Ellard has stepped up. Yeah, Bobby Taylor, you know, a couple weeks ago we saw him do a job on Michael Irvin, and today he's doing a job on Michael Westbrook. Blanton. Hits the field goal for the Redskins from 30 yards out. And they lead now 24 to 14. 23 to 14. I beg your pardon. And eight central on Fox. There's a pigeon race. Uh, I take this one. You think they're not going to attack, are they? No, no. They're just having a little walk in the park here. They're, they're looking for grass on an artificial turf field. Witherspoon brings it out of the end zone. Just to the outside. Still on his feet outside the 30 and the 33. Patrice Alexander made the stop. 23 to 14. Washington over Philadelphia. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. A good old fashioned NFC East matchup. You know, in the Redskin defense in the last couple of weeks, it looked so bad. You, yeah. know, they, you know, two weeks ago against Buffalo, they couldn't stop the run. Last week, they couldn't stop the pass against Arizona. And 
Today they've been they've been scrapping this Eagle offense pretty good all day. Doing a good job. And the Redskins lead. Here's Detmer. That's complete to Christy Jones. Well, Sean Gilbert was right back there in his face, and we saw him. Remember earlier where we saw Sean Gilbert? Here's Sean Gilbert here where he was hanging all over Ty Detmer on one of those interceptions, and you can see why. I mean, he just takes a rush and goes to the outside and, and, and doesn't let Ty Detmer have some place to step up. Now, see, Ty Detmer can kind of move around that big pile, but Sean Gilbert will always create a big pile. Hurry, Water stopped by Gilbert. He is very close to a first down. This is a good matchup here. You just see Joe Panos again guarding the, you know, you know, you know, you're blocking against Sean Gilbert. Sean Gilbert wins this one. He gets underneath him. You see, once you get underneath the shoulder pads and you get the guy straightened up, you have won that battle. And Joe Panos is going backwards and he's in the hole. So there's no place for Ricky Waters to run. But Sean Gilbert caused that play. Third and one. The Eagles three out of five in situations like this. That's Waters who bounced outside and I think got it up for the first down. If not, he's very close. He wouldn't have had it on the on the first try. He tried to go in there to the left or or up the middle and he had to kind of fall out to the right because it wasn't there initially. Watch when he comes up here. There's nothing there. And then as he hits in here, you see he hits right there. Look, there's nothing there. That wouldn't be a first down. But then as he slides out to the right, he gets the first down. Because they really had that middle plugged up. Ricky Waters ran right into the middle and then felt that plug and then slid from the plug up. They're going to measure. You know, John, the owner of the Washington Redskins, Jack Kent Cook, Norb Turner's boss and friend, just got out of the hospital yesterday. He'd been hospitalized with complications from arthritis. He's at home watching today. What a remarkable man he is. And we we send along our best and only to get well. Detmer back to throw. Steps up the pocket and the pocket collapsed around him around the corner is Owens again and Ken Harvey and yeah, you see Ken Harvey is going to be a rusher Ken Harvey comes from this side Owens from up here on this side you see they both get there about the same time and they make Ty Detmer come up Ty Detmer had to step up and then when he stepped up he still had nothing and then that second layer got him that first layer came from the outside and forced him up to the second layer. Then the second layer of rush got him. Detmer back on second down. Again, the pocket collapses. Uh, he threw it away in the direction of Irving Fryer. Holy moly, someone ran right over Barrett Brooks' his left tackle. I mean, this, if, you're, if, if you're a tackle watching, you're right here. This is what you don't want to happen to you. And they didn't run over him. He tripped. Yep. What he did is his right foot stepped on Joe Panos and he tripped. And Sean Gilbert on top of Ty Detmer. Watch him. You see that Panos right here stepped on his foot is what happened. Boy, that is tough pass protection. When you're going your pass protect, pass protect, and the guy steps in your foot. Screen pass to Waters. That's been the successful before Marcus Patton made the stop. Charlie Garner, by the way, my information is that his foot was injured. You saw him limp off the field. And this is an interesting call here, Pat. It's going to be fourth down and about three. Ray Rhodes knows that the quarter is coming up, and he has to make a decision here. Again, Charlie Garner injured his left ankle, and in all likelihood, he will not return. Back at Veterans Stadium, fourth quarter to come. And the Eagles will start it back in punt formation. Brian Mitchell deep for the Redskins. Tommy Hunt. High kick is going to sail into the end zone. 
Listen to those boos. Yeah. I think part of them is for Hutton kicking it in the end zone again where the Redskins get the ball in the 20. And maybe the other is with the score 23-14, maybe these fans wanted Ray Rhodes to go for it on fourth and two. Uh, they always want you to go for it. Yeah, no. <laughs> at Veterans Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Washington has the ball at their own 20. First and 10. Brock under pressure and down he goes. Hit from behind. By a blitzing William Thomas. Like you say, that was William Thomas coming from the backside. William Thomas is going to be here. He comes from the backside on a blitz. You see what happens? They get the safety walked up. The tight end releases, and no one blocks William Thomas. Mamula had moved inside, which uh, at some point he has to be able to do. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, Emmett Thomas. Harry Allen is hit. Hit by Hollis Thomas. And now they know that they have to get after him. We're talking about who makes these calls right now. That's the defensive coordinator, Emmett Thomas. I remember one of the great players. I remember oh. years ago he was a cornerback for the Kansas City Chiefs. And one of the best ever. Yeah, I know he was the toughest guy we ever played against when I was coaching the Raiders. Couldn't get anything on Emmett Thomas, but he made a couple aggressive calls there because he hadn't blitzed a lot. Now they need the ball back, and they have the Redskins backed up, and they went after him. Now on third down, they won't go after him now. He's going to lay off. Third and 15. And the rock dumps it to Mitchell. Mitchell gets up to about the 24, bounces to the 25 before he's stopped by Zordich. And the Redskins will have to punt it away. And once Ray Rhodes made that decision where he had fourth and short in midfield to punt the ball, then the defense had to come up. I mean, he had his defense. He had his, he was telling them, okay, I'm going to back him up. I want to get him down there. And you got to get in there, be aggressive, and stop him and get the ball back for us. And the Eagle defense did that. Matt Turk, who's a great big guy with a very strong leg, back to punt for the Redskins. Fielded at the 22-yard line. And Say is down to 25. Good coverage again by the Redskins special team. 52-yard punt, three-yard return. Tackled by William Bell. That's going to be a penalty, and it's going to be a penalty against the Redskins. They're going to have to punt that thing again. They had the good coverage again. Well, you know, I think that hang time, I was watching that hang time, it was like 4-5 when he caught the ball, and 4-5 is a good hang time. But that was not one of his better kicks. No, but if you can get it up there, I mean... Uh, ineligible downfield early on the kicking team, number 30, 5-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Oh, I agree with you. That's good hang time, but that was not one of the kicks that we have seen. That first opening day, some of those punts that Matt Turk got off were higher than RFK. Now, he was kicking them right out of the stadium. Like you said, he's a, he's a he's a big guy. He weighs like 235, 240 pounds. He's really too big for that number one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he ought to, you know, at least get a double digit. Someone, 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 said, said, his, someone said his first first name ought to be Turk. Turk <laughs> Matt. That doesn't fit. Yeah. What is that thing on his left wrist? He got a rubber band on his right wrist, and then on his left wrist looked like he got a tape job from some injury from tackling. That's a lot for a kicker. It's another good punt. All in the fourth say was cut down at the 20 by Derek Brownlow, who's always been good on special teams. A 59-yard punt that time, and a one-yard return. The Redskins 23, the Eagles 14. The Eagles have the ball at their own 21-yard line. 
in the NFC East standings the Eagles seven and three Washington seven and three so the winner of this one goes into first place in the NFC East Dallas plays Green Bay tomorrow night and I'll tell you one thing Philadelphia has a lot easier schedule from here on out than the Washington Redskins Redskins still play the Cowboys twice there's Ricky Waters Waters First down yardage out to the 35. Stanley Richards with a stop right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat, the Panthers hoping for a playoff spot this year. Anthony Johnson, 77 yards in the game thus far. This a seven-yard run to score. 17-10, Carolina over St. Louis. Back to Pat and John. Back here at Veterans Stadium, it's 23-14 Redskins. Eagles first and ten at their own 35. Denver back to throw. Bryant makes the catch. Pretty close to a first down. Darrell Green made a stop. Let's go back, John. We were talking about the remaining games and the schedules. Yeah, you know, it, it looks like if the Eagles could win this game, get by this game, that, you know, they have a pretty easy schedule. Arizona, the Giants, Indianapolis, the Jets, and Arizona. So, I mean, there's nothing easy. There's no gimmies in this league, and I know that. But the Redskins, on the other hand, have to play the 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys in like five days. Denver. Pass is caught at midfield by Fryer. Here is the Redskin schedule after today. San Francisco, as you said, and Dallas in four days. Tampa Bay, Arizona, and then Dallas again, the final game at RFK Stadium. Yeah, but the Redskins have done an outstanding job. I mean, I yep. think if you say who's, you know, there's a lot of good coaches in this league, but North Turner, Ray Rhodes, you know, are two of the best. I think North Turner has done more with less at being seven and three than anyone else. Waters breaks into the Redskins secondary momentarily. Marcus Patton finally stopped him as he got a 40. Got down to the 40-yard line. About a yard shy of the first. Well, they're getting right in behind this right side. You see, you start from the left side. Guy McIntyre's in there, stays with his guy. He just got he just got enough of Sean Gilbert. Guy McIntyre did to shield him, to let him so that he couldn't get from that back side to get Ricky Waters. Waters gets the carry again and breaks a tackle and gets a first down. Kevin Turner got the key block. Dexter Nottage made the stop for Washington. And Ricky Waters has to do it now. You know, last week they put Charlie Gardner in. Earlier today they had put Charlie Gardner in to give him a life, and Charlie Gardner isn't available anymore. So the running part of the game it has to be Ricky Waters, and he's carried the ball 23 times today already for 90 yards. Nine and a half minutes remaining. The Eagles marching, the Redskins leading. This is Waters again to the 32. Stopped by Patton again. Yeah, and this is when you get to the Redskin defense, and that's one of the things Norv Turner was talking about last night, that, you know, we get ahead, and then they get to our defense, and sometimes he said, we get ahead, then they start going four wide receivers. We have to play nickel and can't stop them. Here they got ahead, and the Eagles are just coming back and just ramming the ball right down their throat. North Turner said to us last night, we can score with anybody, on anybody. But now we're on defense. That's Christine Jones. That's that same pattern. That crossing pattern, Harvey made the stop. Yeah, they've gotten, and that's, that's a third big play. They've gotten one big play with got them down to the goal line. They got a, a, a touchdown off this play, and they get it again. Again, just, just, just getting Sean Gilbert out of there, Ty Detmer finding a lane, and Chris T. Jones are running that crossing pattern. First and 10, Philadelphia. Three wide receivers for the Eagles. They're out of the huddle in a hurry now. Detmer changing the play at the line. Interesting thing happened on that play. It was it was an audible, like you say. Ty Detmer clapped his hands, and and on the other end, Fryer clapped his hands. 
And if you can see, see, see him clapping his hands there, now that's part of the audible, either that yep. he got it, and then he is going to run an up out here on Daryl Green. See, it's a little stop and go. So Ty Detmer saw that tight coverage, man on man, wanted that matchup because he had no help. Irving Fryer claps his hands, which means I got it, and then they went to get it, but then. Here's Detmer back to throw. He has good time this time. The pass goes tight in. Jason Dunn is caught in the flag. Two flags on the play. And they're signaling he was down, I think, at about the one-yard line. Ken Harvey and Daryl Green were both down there. Ty Detmer's trying to get something, but that was a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch by Jason Dunn. Wasn't it? Ricky Waters saying we got to have that much. So apparently, and obviously now it was not a touchdown. On he the is defense, down. Number 57, penalty will be declined. It was a catch, be first and goal. Yeah, they're calling. You see Ken Harvey had his hand on Jason Dunn. He had his arm around his waist as he caught the ball. But you see the arm in there around the waist? Jason Dunn just stuck with it, just stayed in there. Daryl Green was over the top. Ken Harvey was hanging on to him. That was a heck of a throw by Ty Detmer. And a heck of a catch. I know, with concentration, when you got a guy hanging around your waist and a guy over your head. At any rate, it's first and goal for the Eagles at the one. I don't think Ricky Waters would get it here. I would think you're right. He scored the other touchdown. He scores this touchdown. Yeah, what they do is they put Ricky Waters as a, as a fullback on goal line. He was a fullback location then. I'll tell you, winning and scoring touchdowns are a great deodorant. Here he is right here as a fullback, not the halfback. You see, and then the, the fullback becomes the halfback, Kevin Turner, and he gives him the lead. Started in there in that right side and just felt that soft middle. Anderson for the extra point. And it's 23-21. Washington leading with 7.45 left. Next Sunday, a Fox doubleheader. The 49ers against these Redskins at RFK Stadium. That's where John and I'll be. Cowboys, Giants, and the Eagles against the Cardinals. 23-21 in this one. The Eagles have won the last eight games of this series. Brian Mitchell returns for the Redskins out to the 26th. Special teams have improved just a bit. Well, that's the one area that they were worried about, and the one guy that they were worried about was Mitchell there, who just got that ball. First and 10, Washington at their own 26. The last time the Redskins had the ball, the Eagle defense changed up a little bit. They started to blitz a little bit more, put some pressure on. Yeah, they started to go after him. They were a little soft, I thought, in the first half. And then and then they started to pick it up in the second half a little. Then the last series, they went after him. They were a lot more aggressive. Logan gets the carry. And gets very little, if anything. Now, they're not having much success over there. Mike Mamula is playing well, and William Thomas and that's that's where they're getting the tackles and it's also where they're getting their rush from these two guys here are really giving the Redskins some problems I mean they're plugging up everything when they try and run that way and they're providing that backside pass rush Red Hall's had a good game over there too Perron gets it out to Logan Logan taken down by Brian Dawkins you talk about a big play. This third down coming up right now is a big play. 6.48 left. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and
in the National Football League is prohibited. Third and four. The Eagles have to stop him here. The Redskins have to get a first down here. Three wide receivers. Farrakh goes quickly. Asher caught it out of a pack of Eagles. Good throw by Farrakh. Farrakh's made some good yes, throws sir. today, and he's made some good throws to Asher. Here's Asher right here. The tight end, you see they have the flanker right behind him. Asher gets grabbed there. He just stops. Now, Zordich was playing a zone. He let Zordich go by him. He just stopped and turned and showed Gus Farad his numbers, and Gus Farad hit him perfectly. That's a good job by the two of them. I'll tell you, and that can buy him another two or three minutes. They lead by two points. Farad back to throw, goes deep, and that's going to be over everybody, intended for Westbrook. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman, the technical producer is Bob Muller, associate director Rich Russo, the broadcast associates are Mike Roig and Fran Morrison. Studio was produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And we'd like to send our best wishes and a speedy recovery to one of our technicians, Mike Nathanson. Second and ten. to Westbrook Westbrook up to about the 48 wrestle to the ground by Bobby Taylor I'll say one thing about North Turner he's he stayed with Westbrook today and he stayed with him trying to get him deep I mean they got the first down and instead of trying to come back and get another first down boom he took a shot to try and score a touchdown then he came back on second down and used Westbrook instead of a go deep guy just a possession type guy and when you get him at 220 pounds, he can get an extra three or four yards. And now we come up with another big third down play. Third and about three. Four, call it. Three wide receivers and Brian Mitchell and Farrakh back to throw. Over the head of Asher. down and North Turner that knows it would have bought another couple of minutes and then some more chances at this Eagle defense. Now they're going to have to punt. Matt Turk comes on had a good day punting averaging 57 yards. Hasn't had to kick one inside the 20. He hopes to get this one down somewhere inside that 20. Yeah, as you saw North North Turner over there Pat you knew that he didn't want to put this game in the hands of his defense. But right now he is. Turk. Aiming for out of bounds. And it bounces out of bounds at about the 16 yard line. Mark Say was back there, but he let it go. 23 21, Washington leading Philadelphia, 440 left. Back at Veterans Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. That's the way it stands as of the moment. Terry Allen still leads the NFC by one by yard. yard over Ricky Waters. That's not Ricky Waters, I don't think. I don't even think that guy used to be Ricky Waters in his dreams. There's Ricky Waters. He was one yard away from Terry Allen, and now he's going to be about six yards away from Terry Allen. But you're going to see again, we talk about penetration. You see what Owens did? He takes an inside move there and gets yeah. penetration. And anytime you can get a lineman that can get that kind of penetration to the side that the ball is coming, the ball carrier has no chance. He lost eight yards. Three wide receivers for the Eagles. Ricky Waters in the backfield. Detmer is sacked. That might be a safety. Boy, that's awfully close. The official right there didn't call it a safety, though. Harvey made the hit that knocked him back into the end zone. That safety could have been big. And Ty Detmer got up limping, too. 
Watch it. Here's Harvey right here, number 57. He's coming on a stunt. He comes up there and gets Detmer. I don't know that that wasn't a safety. I mean, that ball broke the plane going back that way. Third and 25. This Redskin defense got tired of being abused. Detmer behind Chris T. Jones. And they're going to have to punt. The Eagles are going to have to punt. Yeah, Remember I limping. said that Ty Detmer on that on that second down play, he got hurt and he got up limping. He's limping off now. See, he's been sacked three times a day. He's been hit seven times, hurried five times. The Redskins have put a little pressure on him yes, today. Yes, they have. And now they have to punt, but they don't have the whole 15 yards. He only has 11 yards. This is where they can be blocked. Hutton gets it out of there to Mitchell at midfield. Brian Mitchell swings still on his feet inside the 30 to about the 27, where the Redskins will take over. And Sylvester Mitch Wright stopped him. And Mitchell's running over to the Eagles sideline. Mitchell's one of those guys, he's just a real aggressive guy. And instead of running back to his sideline, he ran over to the Eagles sideline to tell him what he just did. <laughs> Did you see? Your... It isn't funny if you're an eagle, but no, boy. no, especially when you're behind. You yeah. See, that's that's the thing. If you're if you're winning, you can say, yeah, look at the scoreboard. When you're losing, there's not a thing you can say. Well, if he hadn't been winning, he wouldn't have made that visit. No, of course, they may have made the visit to him. But he's been, you know, you know we talked about things that Ray Rhodes was worried about, and, and one of the big things that worried him was Brian Mitchell. Terry to the 20. Almost broke it. Bobby Taylor made the stop. Yeah, old Ken Harvey brought a little heat there at the end. He's had two sacks today, and yep. Ken Harvey hadn't hadn't been playing well. Hadn't had a lot of sacks, but he sure put some pressure on Detmer on that last series. This is an Eagle timeout. They'll have two left. You know, here was a key play on that on that last drive. Number 57, Ken Harvey coming in here, getting tight Detmer on that play. That was a key play for the Redskins. The Eagle defense rises up to meet Terry Allen on second down. Zordich was the leader. And it'll be third and still a couple of yards to go for a first. The Eagles take another timeout. You know, and on that play, Ty Detmer not only almost had a safety and, and, and got a sack, but that's a play he hurt his ankle on. You can see he's trying to walk it off because the Eagles are going to get the ball back one way or another here. Well, of course, the Redskins are now at the 20, well within field goal range. And the Eagles have one more timeout. There will also be a timeout at the... Uh, two minute warning. There's the ex Redskin. Yeah, he's probably been in more of these games than anyone, hasn't he? Mark Rippon. Yeah. Remember that big year that he had with the with the Redskins? Super Bowl year. That's Super Bowl year. In fact, he was the most valuable player in the Super Bowl. But that one year, I mean, he was hot. Any anything he threw up would be caught, no matter how far. That's Terry Allen. Got a Redskin first down. That's the thing that he said. Now, now, now watch Trey Johnson here. He's number 77. And, and Terry Allen says, well, this is a real good feeling when you just have him pulling, just, just getting in the way. You know, that everyone, he just kind of falls and bumbled and stumbled and tripped. And Terry Allen still stayed in there behind him. Hide behind him. Terry Allen just got that first down in the first half he was limited in the second half as he so often does he just gets stronger and stronger and he's one of those guys that you know he says he gets tired like everyone else does but maybe he's a better runner when he's a little tired takes a little of the edge off him there he is. down to about the 14 and a half. And the Eagles don't have any more timeouts, although, like I said, they're going to get a timeout at the two-minute warning. Now, the Redskins really could keep the ball because they can get a first down. You'd think it's something here, if, they, if the Eagles stop them, that they're going to have to try and kick a field goal or try and score here. 
Second down, the clock continues to run. Second and nine. If they get a first down, it's over. The, the game Eagles will be have... over, yeah, if they get a first down. The Eagles have no more timeouts. Allen gets a carry again. And only gets a couple. Brian Dawkins up to make the stop. And that's the two-minute warning, so that'll stop the clock. The Redskins lead it 23-21. Two minutes to go. Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia, Pat Summerall with John Madden, 23-21. Redskins have the ball third and about seven. This is the thing here. It's going to be interesting if they don't get the first down, whether they kick the field goal or not. I if think they, they do get the first down, then the game will be over. Barack. Roll right. Didn't fool Dawkins. And down he goes. Now I think you're right. Now they have to kick the field goal. Philadelphia has no timeout, so what the Redskins will probably do is just let this run all the way down. Take the full 30 seconds off the clock. Probably. See, but once they kick the field goal, then the clock will stop. So it will stop, you know, during the kickoff and the change of possession. Scott Blanton has hit three of three today, 37, 22, and 30. I wonder if they're going to let the play clock run out. It's down to four now and then take a timeout or take a penalty. Now they take the timeout. First team, timeout. 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout. They could have let the clock run out, but it would have pushed them back five yards. Yeah, and they, and they didn't want to do that, I guess. I think that would have... It doesn't make any difference now for the Redskins because they they probably have in the lead. You're not going to take the timeouts. The Eagles don't have any timeouts left. So they figure what the heck we may as well well burn one because we hope. I mean the only way they would is if they make the field goal then the Eagles can't beat them with a field goal. The Eagles have to score a touchdown to beat them. So the only way that the Redskins would need those timeouts is if the Eagles got the ball back and went and scored. Of course, the thing you really want to watch out about right here is that the Eagles would block it. 33 yards away. And Blanton hits. It looked a little feeble, but it was good. And Norv Turner didn't want to have to do that because he didn't want to again he didn't want to put this game in the hand of his defense, and here he has. You know, the last time he put it in the hands of the defense, the defense did well. They really rose to the occasion the last time the Eagles had the ball. And now he's going to ask them one more time. I'm sure that's what he's talking about. All we need you is one more time. They have no timeouts. So it's the Redskins leading. A minute, 20 seconds left on the scoreboard clock. Redskins 26. I think Philadelphia Ray, 21. Excuse me. I think Ray Rhodes was just trying to figure out who his quarterback is going to be. The Redskins have lost five of the last eight games in the final minute, but today doesn't feel like one of those no. days. When you see Ray Rhodes, I think he was looking to see who his quarterback's going to be. Well, Detmer was shaken up. He, yeah. was, he had his ankle retaped. And uh, Mark Rippon was up there for a while warming up. I see down there in the sideline, I see Mark Rippon has his helmet on and chin strap on. Ty Detmer has his helmet on. Those are but, usually the best indicators yeah. of who's going to play. There's the Redskin kickoff. Blanton to Witherspoon at the three. There's some room, and he's down at about the 27. It's going to be Detmer. Lamont Evans made the stop. And, and, now, and now the Eagles have, have no timeouts. And they need a touchdown. A minute and 15 seconds left. No timeouts. And that last goal, that last field goal by the Redskins put them out of range for being beaten by a field goal. It's got to be a touchdown. And this is the last time that the Eagles can take it slowly because... 
The clock won't start till the ball snapped. A minute and 15 seconds. Detmer to throw. Wheels it to Chris T. Jones. And Jones gets to midfield. And everybody yelling, hurry up. All the guys in green, the Redskins will take their time. Even the chain gang is hurrying up, though. You see him down here yeah. at the bottom? That's a hometown chain gang that sprints. Not dressed in green. No. Detmer. <laughs> to Christy Jones again at the 31. Detmer's heard him up again. The he wants to get still down running. there and throw the ball down and stop the clock. That's what Detmer wants to do. And uh, Detmer is still noticeably limping, but the Eagles have moved quickly to the Redskin 31. Maybe that stat about losing games in the in the in the last minute. North Turner knows about that. He knows if he could have gotten one more first down, he wouldn't have had to put the game in his defense's hands. It's the second time at the end of this game that the game has been in their hands, and he needs one more great effort from them. The Eagles at the 31. Here's Detmer. Up into the pocket. Gets it to Ricky Waters. Waters gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Stops the clock with 24 seconds left. What a finish. <laughs> this is great. This is what football's all about. This is what, what the NFL's all about. This is what the NFC's all about. This is what fighting for first place is all about. This is what November football's all about. You think Nor North Turner's interested in all those, what it's all about? Yeah. If, if he wins, he's going to say it's the greatest. Ray Rhodes and Norv Turner, two outstanding young coaches. Definitely. Fryer has it. Batted it, tried to bat it into the end zone so he could catch it. Good coverage by Darrell Green. Although Fryer did have a step. And the ball was thrown a little behind yep. him. Like you said, and, and Irving Fryer had to reach back with his right arm. He tried to reach back and then bounce the ball forward. That wasn't a good throw. Second down. Denver will try again. For Fryer, who took it inside, Denver threw it outside. Do you say a uh, big pardon was the intended receiver not prior you just look at these two coaches Pat. you know what they're going through I mean you do you work you start in training camp you go and, and you do all this work you stay up all night every night game planning and, and you know and working and scheming and you know and making a call and making judgments and then it's going to come down to two more plays whether you're in first place in your division or not third and ten Yards doesn't matter. Detmer, Christy Jones, they were bouncing around in the end zone, but there are no flags. The one thing you find out, I've always felt over the years that when a game gets down like this, officials don't want to have anything to do with it. Officials don't want to determine the game. And they're not going to make calls unless it's a blatant call. That was good coverage, but that throw wasn't bad either. And there was some body contact. But the officials, when you get down to this situation, are going to let that body contact happen. Now, remember the rule that, that the game can't end on a defensive penalty either. This is it for the 10. Detmer throw. Incomplete. No flags. Freddie Solomon is the intended receiver. Detmer. And the Eagles are headed for their fourth defeat. The Redskins will be in first place in the NFC East. What a job North Turn has done. What a job this Redskins team has done to come in here in Philadelphia and battle these Eagles all day and get it down to this one play. They're going to work out there on Tom Carter. Tom Carter's been having a tough time lately, but he came up to that challenge. That was a good play by Carter. Pass intended for Solomon. That's the NFC East standings. Dallas plays Green Bay tomorrow night. Washington is eight and three. Philadelphia seven and four. Well, they can just run it out. Gus Farad had a good day. 
Norv Turner had a good day. <laughs> a long day. He had a good week. He and his staff and his football team were amazing. Here's today's Metal Light play of the game, first of all. Ray Rose, Norv Turner. Here's the play of the day, play of the game. Jamie Asher's second touchdown catch from Gus Farratt. A ball I'm not sure he even saw coming. Oh, well, you know, Gus Farad put the put the mustard on that one like he had to. There was there was the only way that that was going to be a touchdown. That was a zone defense, and he had to zip it in there, and Farad did zip it in there. Noah Turner's first win in November, and his first win ever in Philadelphia. They say all those streaks will come to an end, and it couldn't be a happier ending for one Norv Turner. 26-21, Washington wins.